Hey guys, it's Nick here. Let's talk about bushcraft kits. I'm going to show you my bushcraft kit, talk about what's in it and why it's in there. First of all, I don't know if you guys can read this. Um, my bushcraft kit is centered around the five C's of survivability. If you've ever watched Dave Canterbury or Wilderness Outfitters on YouTube, he talks a lot about the five C's of survivability. And the five C's are cutting tool, container, combustion, cover, and cordage. These are the basic five things you need in any survival kit, and I think they should also go in every bushcraft kit. So the first thing on the list is a cutting tool. I put that number one on my list. That is the hardest thing to recreate in the bush. It, you're not going to be able to go out into the wild without any tools and make a knife. It's just not going to happen. So that's the one thing you're going to want to bring with you for sure. Um, the other things you can kind of get by without, even though you shouldn't, but you need a cutting tool. So, um, you know, I've seen on YouTube some people say that a bushcraft knife has to have certain qualifications, that it has to be a four inch blade, that it has to be scandy grind, that it has to be spear point. And I don't believe that. I don't think a bushcraft knife has to be a certain way. It just has to be capable of completing bushcraft tasks. So if you're able to use your knife, whichever knife you have, to, to do bushcrafting, then that's a bush, bushcraft knife. That's just how it is for me. Um, none of my knives are scanty ground. None of them are spear point. None of them have a four inch blade. Um, so, you know, and I can would consider any of these knives good for bushcrafting. So let me just talk about them. First, here's an Ontario machete. It's made of 1095 high carbon steel. It's really good. It's got good edge retention. It's an eighth of an inch thick, so it's pretty hefty for a machete. Um, this is the 12 inch model, 12 inch blade, 18 inch overall length. I really like this. Um, it's really durable, got a tough blade. I have been, or I have batoned with it through logs with huge knots in them, and I've seen the blade actually bent like that. And then I've pulled it out and it's still straight. So this is a good option for bushcrafting. Um, it's probably not going to be the best for small carving tasks, making feather sticks, things like that. But you can use this for bushcrafting, maybe along with one of these other smaller knives. So that's a good option. Um, these next few knives are custom knives that I have made. And they're all made of high carbon steel. Um, I think one of them is 1095 and the rest are 1085. I believe this one is 1095 and the rest are 1085. Um, but this is actually my friend's knife I helped him make. And it's still at my house that would be a good option. This has about a five inch blade. Let's see here. This one has about a six inch blade. You may have seen it in some of my other videos. I showed how to etch your initials using this blade. Um, this is a great one for bushcrafting. Here's another one that I made. This one has a thicker spine. Um, really good for batoning through wood for splitting. Holds an edge real well. Again, high carbon. And high, I like high carbon because you can throw sparks off the spine with um, flint or quartz, any kind of hard rock. Um, you can throw sparks and with char cloth you can make a fire. This knife would probably be my favorite one out of all these knives. It was one of the first ones that I made myself. Um, I don't know, I just really like it. It's really comfortable. It's got about a five inch blade. I love it. Set that one aside. Um, here's one that I recently finished making. It's a bit bigger, but still manageable. You could use that for bushcrafting. Here's one. Um, this one's special to me. My dad made it for me when I was in the Boy Scouts. So this is a Bowie knife with stainless steel blade and it holds a good edge. 
but you know what, I don't really take it out and use it all that much because it's so special to me. But that would still be a good option. And then here is a really good option. This is a Schrade Extreme Survival. This knife is made of high, 1095 high carbon steel. It's got about a quarter inch thick blade. Would be good for chopping or batoning. Um, and it's still manageable enough to do small tasks with. And I got this on Amazon for 40 bucks. That's a good price for a knife like that. If you can't afford uh, a knife like that or this Ontario machete, or you don't have the skills to custom make your own knife, then you might want to look at something like this. I got this knife for $20 at Walmart. Smaller blade, it's a Gerber, I believe it's stainless steel, but that would still be good for bushcrafting. And then if you're really on a tight budget and you can't even afford 20 bucks, you could go with an old hickory butcher knife. I got this for $10 online. Uh, it's high carbon steel. It's got a pretty thin blade. That's still okay. It holds an edge really well. You can throw sparks off the back because it's high carbon steel. And that would be a good option for bushcrafting on a budget. All right, and then I always like to carry some sort of multi-tool. This is just a cheapy multi-tool I got at Home Depot. It's a Husky brand. It comes with a knife blade, a saw blade, a couple screwdrivers, and a can opener, and um, a file, and of course the pliers. This thing has held up amazingly well for such an inexpensive tool. I want to get a Leatherman or some other um, high, higher quality multi-tool in the future, but for now, this has been working great. So that was kind of long and drawn out, but that's the first C of survivability, cutting tool. And I'm going to keep this one for my bushcraft kit. The rest we'll set aside. Also, I'll keep the multi-tool. All right, so the next C for me on my list, the next most important thing is a container. I live in Arizona in the desert. Water is hard to come by. And for me, the most important thing is a container to carry water, to purify water, and to bring water with me. So I'm going to show you what I like to use. This is just an old military surplus canteen and cup. And they fit together. The canteen is plastic. I think it holds a quart of water. And the cup just fits right on there. It's got um, handles. It's great, you can put it over coals, over an alcohol stove, whatever you have, to boil water, to cook your food, to purify. And it's great because it fits so nicely around that canteen and doesn't add any extra bulk in your kit. That's a good option. I bought the canteen for 99 cents at a thrift store and the canteen cup for $5 at a gun show. So, so far my kit I made this knife myself. I think the total cost of making the knife was under $10. The multi-tool is $5. Together this was $6. So right around 15 bucks so far into this kit. Okay, if you don't have a military surplus, you can also get just a stainless steel water bottle. This holds 24 fluid ounces. This was $5 at Walmart. So either of these options is great. Okay, combustion. That's the third most important because that's pretty hard to do with primitive fire or any way of making it in the bush without already having tools to make fire is pretty hard to do. So let me get my fire kit out, show you what I have. All right. This is my fire kit in an old Altoids tin. You can see it's blackened. I have burned it with cotton inside to make char cloth. Um, here's just some cotton like makeup removal patches. 
I got from my wife. Um, those are really good. You can fluff them up with a lighter. Those will burn real fast. This is a mini Bic lighter. Ferro rod. You can light the cotton with the ferro rod if you need to. And you see that throws really good sparks with the back of my knife. I have char cloth, good amount of it in here. And I have, I don't know what kind of rock this is. Um, can't remember where I got it either, but a little piece of hardened carbon steel. And this rock, I, oop, see that rock's not that greatest. I just chipped a big piece off of it, but it works. Um, I don't know if you can see real well, but this is throwing little sparks off. With char cloth and those sparks, you can start a fire. I've done it with this. And then I also have in the bottom here a Fresnel lens. This is basically a magnifying glass. And with the sun, you can magnify it into a small point, start a fire that way. And if you're having trouble getting a fire lit with a magnifying glass, Throw some char cloth in there and you'll get it lit real fast. Then also I just have a little or a heavy duty needle for any sewing repairs I might need to do. And also just because it fits in there, um, a hardened steel arrowhead that I made just in case I need to make a bone arrow. So that's my fire kit with a Bic lighter, ferro rod, cotton, char cloth, anything you would need to start a fire. Then I always carry a backup lighter because if I lose this kit, which I hope I don't, I need to have some sort of backup lighter and I can throw in there an extra ferro rod and uh, that'll be good. Now if you're having trouble getting a fire lit in damp conditions or anything, carry Vaseline with you. If you put this in your cotton tinder, um, it'll burn like five times as long. That's just great. That'll help you. Another thing you can do is save your dryer lint. Keep it in a little Ziploc bag, keep it dry. That's great for starting fires with a ferro rod, flint and steel, whatever. So that's combustion. Next on the list for me is cover. So I like wool blankets. They retain heat when they're um, wet, when they're damp you can still stay warm with a wool blanket. This here is not a very expensive one. Um, it's a blanket that I got at Harbor Freight for four bucks. They're normally like 10 bucks, I think, but this one was returned, it was already opened, so I got it for four bucks. But for $10, it's 80% wool, it's really large. I've taken it out camping. That's a great buy. Um, Actually, this green thing that I'm on here is another wool blanket. It's only 70% wool. I got it at an RB surplus for like 20 bucks. So this is a better buy. Better quality, higher wool content. That's part of my cover. Um, and the second part are these tarps. I got this tarp at Walmart for 10 bucks. 5 foot by 7 foot. It's water... I think it's waterproof, at least water resistant. It'll shed water off of you, keep you dry. Along with your wool blanket, you're going to stay plenty warm with a tarp and a wool blanket. And so that will be my top cover, or I can put it on the bottom of me to keep my wool blanket off the ground. I also have this one that I made. Um, this one's a little bit bigger than this one, and I waterproofed it. It's got um, loops on each corner that I can drive a stake through if I need to make some sort of a makeshift tent. And I keep four stakes rolled up in the center of it. So that is covered. And then last on the list is cordage. I like to always carry paracord with me, either 50 or 100 feet or more. Um, there's a million uses for paracord. You can obviously string up your shelter with that. You can if you had to, you could climb maybe down a small area if you doubled it up. Um, it, it's 550 pound test, so it should hold your weight. You don't want to depend on it, but if you had to, maybe you could. You can make snares with it. 
you can cut it down, pull the center out, and get string. There's seven strands of smaller string in the center of this, and it's nylon. It does tend to stretch a little under weight, but it's really strong, really good, useful. Also for cordage, I like to bring a little roll of jute twine. Jute twine is great because it's biodegradable. If you leave it out in the bush, you don't have to worry or feel bad. It's going to break down and it's not going to hurt the environment. It's also good because you can cut strips of it off, um, maybe little two inch sections, fluff it up real good and make a bird's nest or a fire bundle and that will help you get your fire started. Put some Vaseline in that, that will burn for a good long while. So that is the basics of a bushcraft kit or any survival kit, the five C's. The rest that I have here, I'm going to show you, is kind of just some odds and ends that I think are also great to have in your bushcraft kit. So we'll get to that. All right, next on the list, on my list anyway, is gloves. These are some Wells Lamont um, work gloves. I really like them. They're uh, like spandex type stuff on the outside for stretchiness and leather to protect your, the palms of your hands. And they just strap on. These were 10 bucks at Walmart. Um, and they're really durable. You can obviously tell they're dirty. I've used them a lot and I really like them. Okay, another thing you're going to want um, for your bushcraft kit is a light. I really like a headlamp. This is a black diamond. It's really bright. It's great. You put it on your head, you have both hands free, and you can see in the dark. And then I always carry a backup light just in case the batteries go dead in this one. I drop it, break it, lose it. I have a backup. And this is a really bright Cree LED flashlight. This thing can put a beam out over a hundred feet or more and a really concentrated beam. It's just good for seeing in the dark, you can spotlight animals, whatever. That's another good thing to have. All right, another thing you're gonna want in your bushcraft kit is some sort of sharpening stone. This is just a little ceramic stone I carry with me to hone my edge of my cutting tools. And it's great, it's lightweight, small, I can fit it in my pack. Don't wanna be without that. All right, to go along with my shelter and my cover, I like to carry some carabiners. Those are great if you're uh, trying to string up some paracord around a tree. You might want to use this. If you have two lengths of paracord, tie one around one tree and then hook it up with this to tie it off to another tree. That's always a good uh, thing to have. Okay, I also like to always carry an alcohol stove with me. This is one that I made. I have a few videos on my channel showing how to make alcohol stoves, so if you have any questions about what an alcohol stove is, how it works, go watch those videos. This one is very similar to the one that I made out of the dollar store aluminum bottle. And it's just um, basically the same concept, only I used an energy drink bottle instead of a dollar store bottle, but it's the same exact thing. And then on this one, I added this fiberglass wick on the bottom. So when I fill it with alcohol, I dump some out of these little holes on the side, get that full of alcohol, light that first, it primes and heats everything up real nice, and this alcohol stove is super fast to use because of that. It will light up in about five seconds as opposed to 30 seconds to a minute. So that's good. And of course, you can use that for cooking, boiling water, purifying water. That's a really good thing to have. Okay. Another little thing, this little cheap compass that I got at an army surplus for a couple bucks. This isn't the best compass or the best option for a bushcraft kit, but it's good, good enough for basic navigation. Maybe in the future I'll save up and get a better, nicer compass, but for just basic navigation this is good and it'll work. Okay, let's see. Whenever I'm camping, hiking, backpacking, out doing bushcrafting, I always have a bandana with me. I'm probably either going to be wearing one or have it in my pocket. So 
Bandana is great. You can use it for first aid. You can cut strips off. Um, use it to cover your head, keep it out of the sun. You can use a bandana to put over the mouth of your water bottle if you're trying to filter out big chunks of nasty water before you boil it. So that's a good thing to have. I always have at least one, probably two or three with me when I'm out in the bush. And then you can also have some electrical tape. You can find many uses for this and a real good use is for first aid. Cut off a strip of your um, bandana if you have a small cut. Cut off a strip of that, put some triple antibiotic ointment on there, and then use the tape. Make a makeshift band-aid. So that's good to have. I don't have any triple antibiotic ointment right now in this kit, but I will definitely put some in there because that's another good thing to have for first aid. And then you're going to want to bring some toilet paper with you. You might not think about it, you might forget, but that's a good thing to always have in your kit because you don't want to be stuck out somewhere trying to figure out if you can use plants to wipe or whatever. You can get a rash, you, can, you might have an allergic reaction, and that will make things terrible for you. So bring toilet paper. Here's my bag of dryer lint, and uh, that's about it for my bushcraft kit. I'll show you. I keep everything, try to keep it pretty well organized. So I have a few of these little sacks I made, and I'll put a lot of stuff in this one. I'll put my fire kit in here. I will put my alcohol stove. I'll put my cordage. Probably the stuff I won't need immediately as I'm hiking. I'm going to pack away in this little bag. I'll put my lights. Unless it's dark, then I'll be wearing the headlamp. I'll put my sharpening stone in this little one. And I'll put my backup lighter in this little one. And backup ferro rod, my multi-tool. And the rest will go in here. Now I keep my lighter and my backup ferro rod separate from the fire kit because if I lose this, I want to have this. If I lose this, I still have this. You gotta have your options and you don't want to put them in the same bag, otherwise what's the point of having extra options? If you lose the bag, you're screwed. It doesn't matter if you put 20 lighters in here. You, you lose this bag, you don't have any fire. Okay, so that's my bushcraft kit. Now, you need some way to carry your kit. There's lots of options for that. You can get an expensive uh, backpacking backpack. You can maybe get a cheap Jansport backpack. You can go to the thrift store and look for any kind of backpack that will hold this. Um, and I'm going to show you what I use. I think it's really cool. This is an old Swiss military surplus pack. I believe it's from World War II. Not 100% sure on that. This was a present for me that my cousin gave me. Right now he lives up in Idaho and they have a really huge army surplus up there. He found this pack for 17 bucks. He found two of them in really good condition. He gave one to me and he kept one for himself. And this is like the coolest pack I've ever seen. It's made out of this like nylon canvas type material. And then on the outside it's all been rubberized. So there's like basically rubber fused to this material and it makes the pack completely waterproof. I love it. It's got two smaller compartments on the outside and one big main compartment on the inside. I'll take my wool blanket, put that at the bottom. Take my tarps. Well, let's first put this bag in here. tarps. I'll probably carry the bandana on me and the knife. Carabiners probably could have gone in that bigger canvas bag. My gloves, either I'll be wearing them or they'll be on the top of my pack. Backup fire sharpening stone. And my water I'll probably keep in these outside pockets so I can get to it a little easier if I need to.
This pack is really cool. It's got just leather, basically little belt straps to hold everything together. Keep my water bottles out here. So, 17 bucks for a really good pack. And it's got this flap on the outside and it's actually got a pocket here. If you have a map, keep it waterproof in there. Any kind of paper you're gonna write on, anything you wanna keep waterproof, put up in here. I mean, the whole pack is basically waterproof, but this is really waterproof. And then uh, it's got little, you connect these loops into here, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that. All right, so you can see, a bushcraft kit um, overall is gonna cost a little chunk of money if you're starting from scratch. But everything I got in here at a pretty good price, I try to get things when they're on sale or find them elsewhere for a better price. Get them at like army surplus. If you're looking for a pack or for canteens, anything, you can go to thrift stores, gun shows, army surplus stores, pawn shops, all good places to look for stuff for your bushcraft kit. Pawn shops can have knives. They might be overpriced. You might find one for a great price. Army surplus, the same. Gun shows are a really good place to look for knives and uh, even thrift stores. I, there's a guy on YouTube, his channel name is Cryptic Cricket, and I've seen him take a kitchen knife, like a thicker chef's knife, and regrind it, reprofile it, turn it into a bushcraft knife for like $2 or under. So if you have the tools and the means, you can either make your own knife or get one at a good price. That's it, that's my bushcraft kit. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, maybe learned something, uh, and I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks.